Hey guys, this is the uh, J&D Manufacturing Agricultural Use Ceiling Fan. Um, I've been meaning to play with one of these for a while. They're model CF60. I've been meaning to play with one for a while because they look identical to an Envirofan Agrofan. And so uh, I wanted to see if they were in fact relabeled Agrofans or if they were something else. So I uh, finally got my hands on one. So let's uh, move this box out of the way. I just put that there so you can see it. But there's nothing too important on the box. You know what one looks like. So here's the uh, J&D manufacturing. And here is the... Uh, it's a 56-inch gold line. Unfortunately, I don't have an Agrofan to compare. Uh, it's on my list. But um, the Agrofan and the 56-inch gold line use the same motor except for the seals and the upper canopy, which I believe has holes to be drained, and the sideband, and then a drain plug in the bottom. So it should be all but the same. So uh, you can look and see that the shape of the motor is in fact the same. Um, screws are different because they're stainless, but that would be the same with an Agrofan. Um, they do, other than the stuff that's supposed to be different with an Agrofan, they do look Pretty much indistinguishable. Let's turn them, turn them sideways. See, there's the bottom stainless and a drain plug, and then of course this one doesn't have any of that. And then here we have the J and D blades, 60-inch gold line blades, which would be the same as Agrofan blades except for the uh, finish, and 56-inch uh, gold line blades. And I am noticing a difference here that uh, the bracket is longer on the J&D one. I don't know why that would be. The blades look to be the same length. So um, one of the things that people have talked about is that these are advertised with steel blades. But I took a magnet. You'll see that they are aluminum, just like the gold line blades. The brackets are steel, but the brackets are steel on all of them. Ah. Last thing I found interesting, here's the packing slip. J&D Sales of Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Well, that's interesting because uh, Envirofan is based out of uh, Oshkosh, Wisconsin. So uh, there's definitely something going on there, whether or not J&D is buying them from Envirofan and relabeling them, or uh, <clears throat> if they're buying them from the same factory and just specking the same thing. That I don't know, but uh, it's clear that they're very close. I'm going to hang this one up and play with it and test it out. Um, a weird plug in there to make sure no water goes down the down rod. If you're interested in getting one, I would still get the Envirofan. These go for anywhere between 130 and 150 um, plus shipping and tax, and uh, at least through my distributors, I can get an Agrofan for $150, um, everything included. So it's either less to get the actual Envirofan or the same amount to get the actual Envirofan, and then you have Envirofan's warranty and customer service. So, uh, yeah, I hope uh, this was interesting, and I'm about to hang up the, uh, the J&D and play with it. So we'll do a video of that too. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, this is a J&D Manufacturing indoor-outdoor ceiling fan sold for agricultural use. It looks very much like a uh, Envirofan Platinum line, aka Agrofan. Um, so it's pretty clear that they either buy these from Envirofan, relabel them, or buy them from uh, the same factory as Envirofan starting to think it's the latter because the blades appear to be a slightly different shape. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, they're also located in, in um, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. So that makes me think that there's probably an Envirofan connection given that they're in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. So um, I'm going to call J&D on Monday and then maybe I'll find that out. Uh, the reason I'm going to call, I got this. It was new in the box boxes over here, and the box had been opened, but the fan had clearly never been installed. And, uh, the screws that attach the blades uh, to the motor 
the threads in the motor were completely stripped. <clears throat> so there was no way to attach the blades to the motor. So I went to the hardware store and I got a few different sizes of self-tapping screws and I managed to connect the blades to the motor that way. Um, but now, of course, it's not waterproof anymore because that scratched the paint a little bit. And more importantly, those are not stainless steel screws. I don't even know if they have stainless steel self-tapping screws. And so it, no, it would now, if you put it outside in water, it would probably rust. Um, just based on that. So uh, I'm going to call the manufacturer and uh, see if I can get it replaced since it was new in the box. And uh, if they're helpful, then I'll ask them some other questions. I'll explain what I do, that I test different uh, models of ceiling fans, uh, new and old, and recommend them on the internet and whatnot, and um, let's see if they'll give me some information. So uh, it is reversible, but it's not reversible easily. It's the kind of reversible fan they don't expect you to like have it one way in summer, another way in the winter. You basically decide how you want it installed. The reverse switch is inside the lower canopy, and the lower canopy has a rubber seal, two rubber seals, as a matter of fact, that hold it in place. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll do a second video where I reverse it, but I wouldn't be able to do it in the same video as the first one because I would need the ladder to get up there and I have nowhere to set the phone. And So, yeah, we're just going to do this video in downdraft and maybe I'll do a video later on in reverse. So we got the amp meter here. And we got the four-speed control. Let me pick it up. <clears throat> okay, let's go to low. Low is 0.24, which is in the same ballpark as it is with uh, most fans. Haven't done an all-white industrial fan down here in a while. Maybe I know with those I used to leave this. Come on, control. I used to leave this light on here. Maybe it's more helpful to have this light on for the white fans. We'll try that and see. That already seemed to make a difference, but it could be my donation. Feel some air from it already. It's not a bad low speed. I'd like it to be a little slower, but uh, certainly usable. So let's turn it to medium low. 0.49. I did a, a video earlier showing this next to a 56 inch gold line motor and other than the weatherproofing differences they look exactly the same. Um, I also showed the blades to this next to 60 inch gold line blades and they're a different shape. So I guess what I really need to do <clears throat> is get a uh, get an actual agrofan and see what shape the blades are. Well, that's a lot of air. Go to medium high. Okay, medium high. 0.69. Always go to high and check and make sure medium high is not. Um, <clears throat> drawing more current than high because sometimes it does that and that's not good for the fan that's a resonant frequency that's very cold in here now high 0.84 it's interesting because that's considerably higher I did that, that was me just making sure it was on high that's considerably higher than the Envirofan version the Envirofan version is uh, 0.7 I think we tested it so that's interesting there's no rating on it that I can see. There's just a UL label, unless there's that, any, something on that label on the canopy. Nope. Quite a lot of air moved right under the fan. Doesn't seem to be going quite as fast as the Enviro fan either, so that's interesting. Nor is it, it does seem to be quite as much air at the 14-foot uh, mark. Maybe that's my imagination. No, it's still a lot of air back here. It's just... It does seem to be less than the 60-inch gold line. Well, it's a fair amount of air moved back here, but it's not, oh my god, the way the gold lines are. Let's look in here real quick and just see if I've got a... Uh... <clears throat> 
see if the instructions have the current draw. Yep, they sure do. RPM 330, 0.74 amps. Okay. So it's drawing more than its rated current draw. That's interesting. Doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it, though. Okay. Well, we are going to spin it down. I'm going to find my camera stand, which is the roll of shop towels. Sorry, I'm not doing a good job of getting the camera in place today. I'm really syncing it up. There we go, that looks pretty good. A little dirt on it. I did wipe it down because when I was drilling all the self tapping screws, it was getting a little uh, dirty just from the metal shavings and everything. And uh, it appears when I wiped it down, it was still a little wet because it's just little water drops. So, cleaned it up real good for you there. <clears throat> Next control this is the five speed click transformer base. Let's try it on speed five. 0.36. We had a good position in the video. It's, it's hard to tell. I'm at some point I'll invest in a real camera. I'm gonna play with the camera filtration just a little bit. Okay, so that's actually pretty good right there. So if I can just get it to stay there, that's not too bad. Okay. Speed four. 0.46. I'm going to go through these pretty fast since there's not a big difference. At least I can tell there's going to be not a big difference. Speed 3, 0.58. Speed 2, 0.64. And then speed 1, 0 0.85, 0 0.84, 0 0.83, 0 0.82. 0 0.81, 0 0.8, settling at around 0.8. Okay, spin that down. <clears throat> I was saying in the other video that uh, I can't think of any reason to get one of these over an EnviroFan. They're around the same price. And uh, we know the EnviroFan is a good product. We know they stand behind their product. If for some reason you can't get an EnviroFan at a competitive price, and you are looking for the 60-inch waterproof version, I don't see any reason not to give this a try. You know, it's definitely it's a cast-iron motor, so right there, it's better than anything else in the market besides the EnviroFan. Solid state speed, speed control here, just getting it ready. Let me see something actually. I forgot I had that light on. That light may not help when I move the camera over there. Better or worse? I can't tell. just for the sake of whatever, because I can't tell the difference. <clears throat> Solid state speed control. Starting on the very lowest setting, 0 0.01, that's not going to do anything. Oh, 
Okay, but it jumped up pretty quickly there. 0 0.13, 0 0.14, 0 0.15, 0 0.16. It's buzzing pretty loudly, but it's not moving. 0 0.17, 0 0.18. Point two, let's try point two. You know what? I haven't seen an agar fan up close, but I'm pretty sure they have a drain plug that you don't have to unscrew, and this has a drain plug that has to be unscrewed, so um seems to be that uh they're getting it from the same factory, but specking it slightly different. Okay, that's point two. We'll do a quarter turn. Point three one. Another quarter turn. It's very loud. 0.58. Another quarter turn. 0.72. So the, uh, I wouldn't use it on the solid state control, it's too noisy. The RZ, these are rated for solid state use, so I guess it's just that they're not rated for quiet solid state use, but it's not like it's a 16 volt motor that's going to be unhappy and... So there you have it. Actually, maybe I will reverse it in the video. I changed my mind because I can just hold it in my hand and go up there in the ladder. And... Well, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to hook the uh, five-speed, four-speed, excuse me, control back up because that was the best range of speeds out of everything we tried. And uh, we'll use that. We'll just do that in reverse. Where is my plug? There's my plug. Yeah, well, I'm glad I got it. I'd rather have an Agrofan. If I was paying full price, I'd want to pay full price and get an Agrofan. But for what it is, and for what I paid, it's a uh, cool little fan. Okay, so let's take the phone. I'm not sure what you can see. I guess just my hand. I'm going to take the screwdriver. And we'll go up in here. Do a little surgery. Very minor surgery. Let's move this seal up and out of the way. The, uh, I need more hands. Or a camera person. I guess that would be more hands. Let's loosen the lower canopy here. Seems like it's actually screwed into the down rod as opposed to, uh... That might actually be a threaded screw there. And there's your reverse switch right here. Yep, there's a thread for that. There's your reverse switch, so let's reverse it. I'm not going to bother screwing that back on. But I will put these back in place just so that it looks the way it's supposed to. Okay. Screwdriver down. I'm going to put that down rod canopy screw in a place where I'll know where it is. So I'm take the fan down I can put it back. Okay, <clears throat> back in position here, four speed control, low, 0.24, and reverse.
Okay. Medium low, 0.49. So, so far the speed speeds are exactly the same in terms of current draw. Medium high, 0.7. Now, if this was actually going to be ran in reverse, you're supposed to flip the blades upside down. So it will actually blow upward. And then high, 0.84, but it's going to drop just like it did before. It's funny, I hear so much air moving, I can't feel a thing. I don't feel any air moving at all. Let's see if I move around, do I feel anything? I can tell that there's air moving, but I don't feel anything at all. That's uh, very interesting. Okay, well, let's spin it down in reverse. So yeah, I'm excited to have found one of these and played with one. I'm disappointed about the threads. I don't know if anything could have happened to it between the factory and getting to me that would cause that to happen, or if it's a factory defect. It makes me a little sad if it's a factory defect, because it's clearly the same factory as Envirofan. But they were telling me um, that other companies that use that same factory have less strict quality control, and that does make a difference. <coughs> And I'm at least glad I was able to put it together today. I was concerned that I wouldn't even be able to because it was giving me so many problems to try to get those uh, screw threads figured out. So there you have it. J&D Manufacturing Agricultural Fan. Hope you enjoyed.